Hello there, and are you all well today? Oh, I am so glad to hear that. And me? Never better. Thank you for asking. And where are we off to today, you ask? Well, how does a flight to the Azores sound to you? Is that okay? <laughs> I got a message from Weapons and More on YouTube a few weeks ago asking me if I could make a flight from Lisbon, that's LPPT, to Ponta Delgada, that's LPPD. And of course we can. Now I did a check and discovered that Ryanair makes two trips each day to Ponta Delgada from Lisbon. One flight, that's flight 2625, is a night flight and departs at 10.29 p.m. But Ryanair flight 2623 departs at 11.08 during daylight hours. So that's the one we'll follow. Both flights used Terminal 2 for departures and we will do the same. You know, as I prepared for this flight, I was reminded of an old film titled Casablanca. Have you seen it? It was made in 1942 and starred Humphrey Bogart and the very lovely Ingrid Bergman. Oh, oh, oh what a fox. I, I had a crush on her. <laughs> and it's set in World War II. And Rick, who's the film's protagonist, played by Bogart, he has to decide whether to help Ilsa, played by Ingrid Bergman, and her husband, who is a Czech resistance leader, escape to America from the Vichy control city of Casablanca. And why? So he could continue his fight against the Nazis. But in those days, the only way out of Casablanca was by air and the route took them first to neutral Lisbon. Lisbon was very important during the 30s and 40s because of the Azores, parked right out there in the middle of the Atlantic, some 900 miles off the coast of Portugal. You see, aeroplanes then didn't have the range they have today, and refueling stops were essential when crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Here's a picture of the routes used by Air France to cross the Atlantic in 1947. Notice that the flight from New York went first to Gander, then to the Azores before going on to European destinations. Typically flights were expensive then and they were slow and uncomfortable. Most aeroplanes at that time had little or no heating. Take an aeroplane I used to fly, the C-47. These were first built in 1941 and were powered by two 1200 horsepower Pratt & Whitney radial engines. The wingspan was 95 feet or 29 meters and the length was 64 feet 5 inches or 19.6 meters. Normally it had a crew of three, a pilot, co-pilot and a loadmaster or navigator. Me? Well, I just had a loadmaster who doubled as my co-pilot. That's him checking the main gear of a DC-6, by the way. The C-47 has a cruise speed of about 160 knots, at 250 kilometers an hour thereabouts. 
and a normal range of 1,600 miles or 2,600 kilometers. With some extra tanks installed, that range could be extended, but at a cost in the amount of cargo or passengers you could carry. Now here's an aviation picture taken in the 1930s. Notice how every bond is wrapped up in furs. <laughs> and this picture shows the first class seating at that time. <laughs> Makes the dining room chair I use in my simulator look quite normal, doesn't it? <laughs> And how cold did it get in the C-47? Well, here's a picture of my cockpit. Notice the heavy blankets we used to try and keep the cold out. And as for the main cabin, here's what one looked like with some extra fuel tanks installed. And yes, that is bare metal there. No insulation provided for cargo or any passenger sitting on those seats. So now you can see why this flight today brought back all those memories and some history of earlier flights. Today, there are aeroplanes that can fly non-stop from England to Australia, the other side of the world. And they have beds in them. <laughs> They're like flying hotels. <laughs> The airport sceneries I have for today's flight are very detailed and realistic. Lisbon LPPT airport scenery is made by MK Studios and Ponta Delgada LPPD airport scenery is made by Tropical Sim. Like the real Ryanair flight we are following, we too will start out from Terminal 2. But before that, Let's pop over into pre-flight and check the weather and make a flight plan, shall we? Well, here we are in Flight Aware and we're looking at Ryanair 2623. 2623. Now, this is the designators right down here that you can see. This is now en route and on time. It's arriving in one hour and 41 minutes, according to this. You can see it left Terminal 2 at Lisbon, and it's going to be landing at Ponta Delgada in one hour, 41 minutes, according to this. So it's on time. Looking at the route, you can see where they took off here. Uh, it looks like they took off going in a northbound direction before swinging to go straight across to the Azores out over here. And there's right here, there's the destination. The cruise speed looks like it's 38,000 feet. So we'll try to do the same. Right, let's have a look at Windy. Oh, look at this. Wow. Wind is 350 degrees at 16 knots. Oh, it's coming in quite strong there. Coming straight down here, just like that. Visibility is 10 kilometers or more. Clouds scattered at 2,600 feet. Temperature is a warm 15 degrees. Q&H 1011. Almost standard. Looking at the runways, the runway, here you can see they've got the one principal runway and it looks like they went on runway three departure. So that means down here. And here you can see runway three, but just here, this is terminal two and the departing aircraft was somewhere in this vicinity right here. So as you can see, hardly any distance at all to go to the departure runway. But 
It's going to be a crosswind takeoff, so it will be interesting. And here we are at Ponta Delgada. You can see the wind is coming pretty much from the north. But there are hills here, and I'm not sure if that's going to affect the wind direction on the ground, but we'll see. It says here, wind is 360 degrees at 11 knots, quite strong. And it's varying from 330 to 030. Wow. Visibility is 10 kilometers, clouds view at 2,000 feet, temperature 16 degrees, Q&H 1023. A little higher pressure there. But it is VFR and has been for the last several hours. Looking at the runway, you can see why this is going to be interesting. Because if it holds the way it is at the minute then we will probably be landing on this one, which is runway 30. This one right here. And that means it's going to be a crosswind landing. Wow. Okay. Test of the skills then, I suppose. We'll have to find out how well I do. Right, here we are then in Sim Brief. Let's make ourselves a flight plan and see what comes up. Airline, we are Ryanair and we are 186. We're departing LPPT and we are going to LPPD. LPLA is the alternate. I'm not familiar with that, but we'll look it up in just a moment. Here's our airframe. And there's our registration. We're Cruise Profile 6. Here you can see our ATC call sign is Ryanair 186. Schedule flight time. This is from uh, dock to dock is 2 hours 45. It's saying that we will be on runway 03 departing and runway 30 arriving. Altitude, I'm going to leave that just to see what it comes up with. I don't know if it will come up with 380 like the other. Shall I put it in? Okay, why not? So I'll put in then 380 so that it matches the other one. We are full, of course, and we do have, because it is a long journey, we have one ton of Precious champagne and caviar. You know, on a flight over water like that, there's not much to see. There's water and more water and still more water. So may as well have something to drink while you're crossing all of that water. Now, here's the route that it's come up with. I don't know if this is going to be the same, but... We'll see. This is calling for the route right here. Oh, LPA, there it is. It's just another airport in the Azores. Well, if that's the alternate, then we don't have far to go. Now, this is showing a swing to the south. That's interesting, isn't it? Because the other Ryanair flight departed to the north. Well, we'll calculate it using this and see how it works out. It's a little different from the present Ryanair flight that departed to the north, just swung around to the left and went straight across. All right, I'm going to save the flight, close that, generate the flight plan and see what comes up. We've got our flight altitude right there. Block fuel is 8,683. Airtime is 2 hours and 8 minutes. Here's our route all the way through. 
Down here, we've got Ryanair 186, that's our call sign. Here we've got the flight level, and right here we have the flight route. LPLA, this is the alternate should things go pear-shaped. We're going to need to know cost index. We're going to need to know the average wind aloft to put that into the FMC. We'll need to make sure that we have all the fuel that we need. And there's the reserves, 2,279, and the trip and taxis, 5,757. No tankering recommended. If everything works out and there are no changes, this then becomes the route that I will put into the description box below the video so you can follow it as you wish. We're going to need to know descent information, particularly flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet. We need to know it at 15,000 feet and at 10,000 feet. Here's the weather forecast for the region, and there are no significant weather at all. So it looks like we're going to have a fairly clear flight. Let's go to the one closest to our altitude. That would be this one. We're flying at 38,000 feet. This one's flight level 390. And it's showing winds pretty much coming from the north. So it's cross winds and slightly n into our nose. And that changes as we go here. It becomes more of a nose wind than it does anything else. So we have some strong cross winds coming from our forward quarter. And there it is. There's our destination. Here's the cruise profile, the vertical, starting out from LPPT, climb all the way to top of climb, and then all the way across. And this is probably one of the reasons why the Ryanair flight that we're following today is at this altitude, because this is the tropopause. And the air is supposed to be quite calm and easy at that, at that altitude. But you can see the wind is still going to be slightly a headwind and we'll just have to put up with that. And then LPPD, there's our destination. So here we click on flights new flight from Simbrief and we'll use it. And there's the whole route right there. I'm going to click on this, open the charts list. We're going to need airport information and then put that down here. Parking stands and coordinates. According to this, we're using the Buse to North departure. So that would be this one. So I'm going to pin it and then show the chart. This shows us departing, swinging around and then making our departure. At our destination, we're going to need to know the Airport info and parking stands. We're coming in on runway 30 according to our prognosis. So we will be coming in on ILS Zulu category A, which is us, and I'll need to put that in and Let's have a look at the chart. Yeah, that comes in fairly close, doesn't it? Look at that, straight down, straight down the pipe. And if we're coming in on the 
runway 30 and we're looking at the ILS Zulu category A ILS Zulu so let's look at that there that's the one and that has joined up all the lines right there okay we have a good flight plan it seems to be all right we don't have far to go should there be uh, a real problem with landing at Ponta Delgada but you never know ah oh, there you are do come on in and take your seat we're here at LPPT Lisbon Airport and this is Terminal 2 and as you can see we are parked at stand 208 and it even comes up with all of the geographic coordinates for us and it tells us that we are 337.9 feet in elevation let me take you have a look at this here's the airport scenery this of course is made by MK Studios it is very detailed and this is not terminal 1 but terminal 2 and this is the one that the Ryanair flights go in and out of you'll notice that there are no jetways at this one which of course is an additional cost which they pass on <laughs> to the customer if they have to pay those things so they try to keep those costs down as much as they can but there we are 208 that's our stand number for our departure and you can see it is gray and overcast we do have some weather problems at the moment but it's low cloud we'll see so this is terminal 2 then and there is some sunshine but it is sporadic okay I've loaded on 8,000 and 8,683 kilograms of fuel for our trip <laughs> we don't want to run short halfway there do we <laughs> not when there's no place to land other than our destination okay first thing that we do then is we turn on the battery we have 26 volts so we have enough to be able to run the fuel pumps and start the APU and the APU the auxiliary power unit is located of course in the tail and that's going to provide us with 115 volts of electricity once it gets going the low oil pressure light has come up and it will go off in just a moment there's the engine gas temperature is now climbing it will rise and there's the low oil pressure light has gone off it will now it's stabilizing and it's going to start to drop to about four on this little gauge and when it does then this light will come on and we will have then 115 volts and there it is right we're now using the auxiliary power unit to power everything in the cockpit so i need to turn on the irs that's the sat nav system going to be very important if you're crossing over water and there's no natural features to be able to figure out where you are turn on the galley let's see if we can get a cup of tea from them emergency exit lights no smoking fasten seat belts the forward service hatch is open and the equipment stairs are down and our self-loading cargo is already boarding the aircraft 
up here, we'll put the left and the right window heat on. Yes, I'm going to put the probes on early. And I'm turning now the electrical hydraulic pumps. Now, here's the important thing. This is the APU bleed, the packs, and listen. There's that rush of air taking heat and filling the cabin so that we have a nice, comfortable cabin for our journey today. And now, I'll turn on the steady light and it lets the people on the ground know that we are in here and doing our programming. Now I've already done the walk around, I've checked all the tires, made sure that we're all there, all the equipment that we're going to need is on board, the champagne and caviar is all on ice, and we are, I think now are set to program the FMC. So we check the air rack and it is the latest one that's available. The program is also up to date. Our position to start with is LPPT. So LPPT. That of course is Lisbon. The gate is 208. So I'll put 208 in there. And according to the sign outside, it is 3845.9 and 908.3, which is exactly correct. So I'm going to put that in there like that. So now we have our GPS position, our start position located. Now we're going to put in the route. So our origin is LPPT and we're going to go to LPP Delta. Our flight number is Ryanair RYR and we are 186. Go to the next page and now we need to put in the flight route exactly as it comes off the flight plan. So the first stop is Busen, B-U-S-E-N, B-U and S-E-N. Then we go direct to Comot, so K-O-M-U-T. And then we go direct to Beacon. B E and K U N. And then that's it. So I'll activate that. I'm going to go to my fixed page. I'm going to put in now the destination, which is L, P, P, and Delta. I'll need a four mile circle a 10 mile circle and a 30 mile circle. I've already discovered that there is no ATIS available in P3D for Ponte Delgado. So when we get to 30 miles, that's when we're going to find out if we're going to be able to land and which uh, runway we're going to be able to land on. So we won't know anything until we get to 30 miles. Go to descent, go to forecast. Transition level is set by ATC. I'm just going to leave it at that for the moment. Now, but I do need to put in the information for these three altitudes for 20,000 feet for 15,000 feet and for 10,000 feet. The Q and H at our destination is 1023. And then the wind speed and direction 
Uh, 200 is 303 at 18. 303 at 18. At 150, it is 312 at 15. 312 at 15. And at 10,000 feet, it is 322 at 13. 322 at 13. And execute that. Go to departures. Now, this is the point that we need to contact the ATIS at Lisbon. And we need to find out what the active runway is and then we'll need to get our clearance to make our departure so atis is one two four decimal one five so one two four decimal one five lisbon airport information romeo one one two two zulu wind three three two at one eight visibility greater than 20 miles sky condition 3000 scattered temperature one six two point eight altimeter one zero one one landing and departing runway three VFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact you have. Romeo. We have Romeo and it's going to be runway three. So we are good on that. And it will be then the the Busan to North departure. Our arrival, we are still proposing to come in on ILS Zulu on runway 30 so ILS Zulu on runway 30 and we'll be using the Babas to north so the Babas to north ground, and zero, minor, taxi to that parking, will be four, our seven, eight, transition zero, taxi to and then we'll go into legs and see how this works out. So I'm going to now switch to plan. Right, let's have a look now to see how this is going to work out. I'm going to go down through these steps. I'm just going to step through them and we'll see this is going to be our departure route. So we depart, we take that little detour to the south and then we swing out across the Atlantic and there's our route there's Beacon there's SM618 there's the XUVAP and then it's straight down onto runway 30 at our destination so that's our route right I'm switching back to map and going to 20 on that Okay, now I'm going to switch to weather radar on my side, put the data on. On your side, I'm going to put terrain and put the data on on your side. And now I'm going to make sure the TCAS is on. I'm also going to put in the decision height at our destination, which is 410. So 410, I'll just spin this up to 410, there we go, now I have the decision height in there as well. Okay, up here I'm going to turn on the yaw damper and the flight continuity light has gone out. Over here I'm going to put in 38,000 feet, I know ATC is the one that assigns all of these altitudes but we are Ryanair and we're making a big presumption. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it in, in advance. I'll put 38,000 feet in this one too, because this is for pressurization. The airport elevation at our destination is 259 feet. So I'm going to put 250 in this and that represents then our landing altitude for when we open up the the door i'll switch this to anti-skid now i'm going to put in here our departure course if we're leaving on runway 03 that needs to be 26 degrees so we'll set our heading for 26 for departure 
and I'll do the same over here for you. 26 degrees, looking good. All right, so far so good. Everybody's on, so I'm bringing up the door, they're closing the door and bringing up the stairs. There you can hear the motor of the stairs. Now I'm going to finish off the the programming here by going into root and perform the initialization. Now the plan fuel, we need, we've got 8,683 kilograms on board, reserves are 2,279 plus what we'll need for the trip which is 5,757. That comes to 8,036 or eight so that will be our amount reserves 2.3 2.3 cost index is six and then I'll double click that and it will calculate everything that we need our flight level is 380 380 right there the average wind at our cruising altitude is 336 at 44. So 336 at 44. Transition altitude is 6,000 feet. And so we're going to keep that. Going to N1 limit, we're going to just accept the 16 degrees. We're not going to do any D rates or any bumps. Takeoff will be flaps 10 and double click that to get the center of gravity and the trim. The trim of course is what we set on the trim wheel right by the side of the yoke here. And then one click on each of these gives us the V1, the rotation speed and the V2 liftoff. Okay. Now, max speed is 147, so I'll put 147 in here. Okay, so far, good. Now I'm going to put the flight directors on. I'm going to push the V-nav and the L-nav, and we get green lights on both, which means it is a good flight plan. I'll turn the VOR1s and 2 on. Right, I put in the frequencies for VOR1 and VOR2. VOR1 will be the localizer as we make our descent and approach into the runway. And the other one is the VOR, which is located on a small island just north or just yeah, just off the side of uh, Ponte Delgado, and that is 111.2. So that way, we will have two radio navigation units that we can tune into to verify our location. All right, let's do our checklist. Fuel is correct on board. Windows are all locked. Seatbelt signs, they are on. Door lights are out. MCP is programmed and is correct. Takeoff thrust bugs are set. Takeoff speeds are set. Rudder aerolon is free. Taxi takeoff briefing now. When we depart, because I'm looking here at the Navigraph chart, which is down here as you, uh, as you can see. We are right down there at the bottom by Terminal 2 and we need to go to the threshold of Runway 3. So we need to have our tail go to the left and our nose to the right. Alright, and anti-collision light is now on. So we are now ready to ask the nice people on the ground to give us the pushback. 
And uh, which engine would you like to start first today? Shall we do number one or number two? Number two? All right, good choice. We're going to start engine number two, so I'm switching to generator number two over here. And I'm going to turn off the packs in just a moment and we'll contact the ground first. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Ready to push, tail to the left, parking brake's off. Parking brake is off. I'm now turning off the packs so that the air that is coming from Brakes the released. compressor can start to spin the engines. As soon as we move back, we'll start engine number two first. Brakes released, here we go. All right, switching to engine number two. The start valve has opened and you can see here that the N2 is spinning up. When this gets to 24, I'm going to introduce the fuel. And it's getting close. And there it is. So I'm introducing the fuel. Now I'm going to be looking for the engine gas temperature. There it is. It's giving me temperature. Good. Now I'm going to look for the low oil pressure light to go out, and it has. Engine gas temperature is climbing very nicely. We should be able to hear the engines. There they are. Engines have ignited. Good. Now I'm switching to engine number one, and we've got 115 volts on engine number two. Start valve has opened. N2 is climbing. When this gets to 24, we will bring in the fuel. And there it is. And now we're looking for the gas temperature to rise, and it is. We'll look for the... Pushback complete. Parking brake, please. Parking brake is on. Low oil pressure light is down out. And this is spinning up very nicely. When it stabilizes and the generator is functioning properly, that little tick Our light will go off. Disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. And engine number two has ignited. One has ignited. We've got 115 volts. The tick mark has gone off. So now I'm going to switch to the generators coming from the main engines i'm going to go here and turn on the heating again turn off the apu bleed turn off the apu and turn on the three taxi lights and i'm going to go to flaps 10. and we're getting movement on the flaps All we have to do is actually just go out here and we're at the end of the runway, so we don't have very far to go. Okay, now I'm going to contact the ground control and ask for permission to taxi to the active. And we are going to depart initially to the south and then we go, so we'll put number five. Lisbon ground, Ryanair 186, ready to taxi departure to the south with uniform. Ryanair 186, taxi to it, hold short at one way, three, via taxiway, Zulu 2, Zulu 3, flight 5, contact tower on 118.1, when ready. Taxi, hold short, one way, three, via taxiway, Zulu 2, Zulu 3, flight 5, Ryanair 186. Alright, we're clear to taxi and hold short of runway 3, which is just out there. So, adjust the seats, make sure you're comfortable. All right, everything looks good across the board. Attendance, we are getting ready to move. Brake is off, and we'll give a little bit of juice here to get ourselves started. There's an aircraft coming in to land, 
so we may be a little delayed. This one's coming in. Can you see it? Right here, just directly in front of me here. Oh, we got a good picture of that landing, didn't we? And this airport, as I said, is designed by MK Studios. We'll take this one to go all the way around so we get to the very edge of the threshold on runway 03. coming in. 
busy airport. As I said earlier, Lisbon is a very important airport, at least it was in the 30s and 40s because of its closeness to the Azores and refueling. But Lisbon is still an important airport. Ah, they've been given a go around. Change their mind. 
about another hour and a half. So, you've got plenty of time to go back there and let our wonderful cabin crew, uh, crew spoil you rotten. There is champagne, there's beer, there's caviar, <coughs> and there's all kinds of other wonderful food on board. And I'll give you a shout as soon as we are on our descent and arrival into Ponte Delgado, okay? I'll see you in a little bit. Very closely, 
the Active Sky Weather Report on my side monitor here. <coughs> and it is showing the barometric pressure as being 1023 and the runway that is in use is 30. So that is what I'm counting on is runway 30. We are one hour and 57 minutes into our flight and we'll be approaching the 30 mile line in just a moment and then we can contact the tower and get our instructions for landing. All right, we're below 10,000 feet now, so I'm turning on the lights. And attendance, you better start picking up all of the debris, getting ready to land. And if it's a, if it is going to be runway 30, then it will be a straight in landing. So there'll be, it'll happen very fast when we get there. So far it's still holding at 30 for runway. <coughs> We're coming up on a, uh, on the SM618 waypoint in three miles. Right, I'm now going to flaps five. 
make a video of this. There's the cloud that we've got to go through in front of us. There's the island over to the side. So we're coming up. Oh, yep, we're dropping through the cloud now. But we're on course to land. Okay, we've broken out of the cloud. Still don't have the runway in sight yet, but it is ahead of us somewhere. Attendance, secure for landing. Right, we're on the localizer. We are 16 DME miles from landing. approach then we have to turn left on track 286 climbing to 2,000 feet and then left to Petard holding climbing to 3,000 feet so that's our missed approach in case of a problem we are now coming in on the intermediate fix And it looks like we're going straight down the line. I still don't have the runway in sight, but it's got to be down there somewhere. And we're coming up on the minimum descent. We're on 298. Interesting land. 
first thrusters are on. And we do have some gusting winds on here. Sim, this air, uh, airport scenery, tropical sim, and it really is very detailed. It's really quite nice. Look at that. There's a kamikaze vehicle though loitering around with definite intentions. Go on, get out of it. We'll find ourselves a, a place to park right in front of the main terminal and hopefully beyond this kamikaze vehicle here. terminal look at that doesn't that look grand wow how about we go into whiskey three is whiskey three a good one okay whiskey three it is
Right, passengers are disembarking. Look at the scenery on this one. Let me. Here we are. This is the the scenery at Ponte Delgado, LPPD, and we are at. Whiskey 3 stand. Look at the detail on this. Isn't this amazing? This is caused by Tropical Sim. Alright, let's turn off the rest. Everybody's off now, so fuel off. APU off, battery off, and shutdown is complete. Well, I hope you enjoyed the flight. It was a long one. It was an hour and 53 minutes on the clock. And the weather was really quite good. As a matter of fact, Flying at that altitude was very smooth. I saw no bumps, no, no turbulence at all. And still a little overcast. By the way, in case you're interested, July is the best month of the year to come to visit the Azores. July. The sea is usually the calmest during that month and the weather is usually at the best as well. So just in case you ever wanted to come here and have a little holiday, July is the best month to make that. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the flight. I hope that you enjoyed the champagne and caviar and the showing of Jaws in the main cabin while I watched Casablanca. And I'll thank you for the recommendation for the flight and I'll see everyone again in next week on Ryanair 186. Bye everybody.